Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am Louise, this is Sewing Days, and today we are celebrating the start of Pride Month by changing our window display in the shop, by making some bunting, and I will also be showing you a couple of the rainbow themed projects and items that we have here in the shop. Before we get started, if you like this video and enjoy our content, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, all of those YouTube things, you know how it works, and it'd be really great to see you back here every Tuesday for another video. June is International Pride Month. Now, I know I have a very mixed community on here, and I love absolutely all of you, and I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to acknowledge Pride Month and show my support to everybody who needs it, and just just know that for me, love is love. As long as you love who you are, you love what you stand for, and people around you are respectful and are happy for you, that is all you can ask. I just wanna to get to a place where globally, everybody can be happy to love who they love and express themselves however they want to, and not be stereotyped, criticized, picked apart, any of those things, and just be supportive because just because something has been a norm doesn't mean it should be going forward. We are constantly changing as a community and as human beings and I think we need to keep up with everything that other people are feeling too. For me, I don't understand why people don't want other people to be happy. If somebody's happy identifying how they identify, loving who they love and it doesn't affect you in any way, I really don't see that you can have an opinion on it. I don't understand why people wouldn't want somebody else to be happy. If somebody is happy and thriving, identifying however they do, or loving who they love, or anything at all, I don't understand why other people would want to take their happiness away just because it makes them feel uncomfortable. So if you do want to learn more about these sorts of things and be a bit more open-minded, there are plenty of resources out there. Um, even before I did this video, I did some research. I made sure I was using terms that were okay with everybody and it's okay to learn no matter how old you are, no matter your background, we can always learn and educate ourselves to help everyone around us feel more accepted and just allow happiness for everybody. Everybody deserves to be happy and I don't think anybody should have that taken away. So, that being said, I haven't done a vloggy style video for a while, there's been lots of standing and talking, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity, while I've got some changes to make in the shop, to take you along with me. Excuse the noise, there's lots of cars going past today, um, but the window is completely empty, so obviously it looks busier than this. These are the um, stands that are, you can see from the other side, so I'm going to put as many rainbow themed items in there as I can. Kind of hoping it becomes a bit of an assault on the eyes, like that it's so rainbow and so bright. We've also had really good weather this week and last week here in Cambridgeshire. So I am hoping that all the rainbows bring out a bit of sun as well. So I have been around the shop and collected some of the rainbow displays that we've had up at various times. This one is DMC threads. This one I made that used to be on the wall over there before we put our sewing days up sign up when we did the refurb. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it just up here. It's a video we did when we refurbed the shop. I think it was Mar February, March time? I can't remember. It was during the last lockdown that we had while the shop was closed. We had some of the floor replaced, we painted the walls, lots of things. If you wanna see that in detail and when the rainbow artwork was up on the wall over here, um, like I said, I will tag that video for you. I also grabbed this quilt that we made a couple of years ago now actually, um, out of a jelly roll that was all multicolored. So that will also go in the window. This sign lives in the window. It has all our opening times and contact information on it. And then this crate, I'm gonna go and select some wool um, in all of the LGBTQ plus colors and make, it won't be quite a pride flag. We're gonna try and put as many of those colors in here as we can to make them fit. Okay, I've also just remembered that I have some yarn, which is ooh, down here. I also have this yarn, which I'm gonna put in the window as well. You can't get much more rainbow than this. It's bright and I sh I'm hoping that I can balance it on top of this when I put it in the window, but 
we'll soon find out. I'm gonna put these bits in the window now so we can see how it looks and then I'm going to start making the bunting. So bunting tutorial time. So I have cut myself a 25 centimeter strip of all of the colours that I want to use. And I've used polycotton um, mainly because it is the cheapest fabric that we have in the shop. It's only £4 a metre. Um, I will put the link to the item down below. For me, I don't want to use a more expensive fabric for displays. So I've cut myself a bit of these and I will flip the camera around and I will show you what I've chosen. So like I said, these are all the polycottons that we have. They're all £4 a metre. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. This sort of berry colour because I didn't really have a very good purple. White, pink, brown. This is blue. It looks purple. It looks lilac, but it's blue um, and black. I'm about to start the bunting. Now, everything I do, I'm going to be doing in centimetres, but obviously, if you work in inches, the principles are exactly the same. We're going to be cutting the fabric into a strip, cutting that strip into triangles and sewing across the top. But obviously, I will show you a very quick step-by-step -step tutorial. Okay, guys, so just a quick tutorial of making bunting. So, I have a strip of fabric here, it is 20 centimetres from top to bottom, I have squared it up using my rotary cutter and board, so this is going to be the drop for my pendants. I'm going to be making my flags 20 centimetres from top to bottom and then 15 centimetres across the top. So to do that you need to cut a diagonal line which is half of the distance, so I'm going to be using 15 centimetres from here to here, which means I need to cut down to seven and a half, which is half of the 15. If I line myself up to here, measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half squares across, take the guard off my blade, cut through, and that will make my triangle. I then do exactly the same thing here. And then this is now 15 centimetres across the top. Now normally when I do bunting, so I do double-sided, sew it around the edge, flip it through, and it's a lot of steps. Because this bunting is going to be in the window for a short period of time, and because I don't have a lot of time to make it, um, I'm going to be doing it single-sided, which just immediately speeds up the process. If I was gonna have some bunting that was outside or that wanted to go through the washing machine a lot, then I would make sure I did do it double-sided. It just makes it wear longer. If you think you're gonna have up for a long time, it's definitely worth double-siding your flags, but because this A isn't gonna be touched, and B is only going to be in the window for a couple of weeks then I am going to just do it single sided and then sew some binding across the top. So I'm going to keep cutting my flags and once all my different colour flags are cut out I will show you the next step. So I have now cut out all of my pendants in all of the colours and I need to choose some binding to go across the top. If you're doing double sided bunting like I mentioned before then using binding across the top is a really really good way to hide all of your raw edges. It will make it a lot easier to make it look neater and you still just need to sew a single line down it. Because I'm not doing double sided I don't necessarily need to use binding. I could use ribbon or webbing. There's lots of different options, but I am still going to use binding because I've got one that I've earmarked for this and I want to make sure that it looks awesome. So if you don't know, bias binding is used a lot in dressmaking. It's cut on the bias, which means it's cut diagonally across the fabric, which will give it a bit of stretch. Now, if you're doing something around a neckline or something like that, it is really, really good. Um, but for binding, like I said, it hides all your raw edges. And I know I want to use this one. Most of them we have are plain, but you can also get these gingham ones. And I think this one is just super fun for the project that we've got going on. So once you've decided which binding you're going to use, you need to iron it in half. So you want to close it so that the folds are on the inside. Um, I am waiting for my iron to heat up, and then I will show you exactly what I mean. Also, I'm not sure how long I want this to be, so I am using it directly from the roll. Obviously, you guys would go and buy, or come and buy, I should say. Um, you'll come and buy three meters, five meters, however long you want it to be. But because this is going in the window, I'm not entirely sure how long I want it to be, so I'm sort of gonna wing it a little bit, but like I said, you guys would buy it in the length that you need. So if you look at the bias binding, it has sort of two little tabs on either side. This is so that there isn't a raw edge on the edge of your binding. So what we're going to do to use it is fold it in half so that the tabs 
are face to face, so they're on the inside, so we get a nice smooth piece of binding. So I'm going to work my way along, pressing it face to face, lining up the edges, and then once I've got to the end, we will start putting in the flags. Not everybody presses it before they start. I do, because I think it gives you a better finish, it's easier to handle, um, but you can finger press it as you go along, so you squeeze it with your fingers to keep it closed. But like I said, I find that a lot more difficult. Although it will take you a bit of extra time, it will make it infinitely easier when it comes to sewing if you have already ironed your binding closed. So I already have my machine threaded up with some white thread on the top and on the bottom. I have my binding here, which is opening on this side. Now when you're putting it through your machine you want your open side to be this way so it's away from your machine because if you try and do it with your flags in your machine here it will just make it a little bit more difficult and a little bit more fiddly so always keep with whatever project you're doing always keep the majority of your fabric on the outside of your machine what you want to do initially is sew a length at the end of your bunting without any flags on it now I this is always something I make sure I cover when we do our bunting classes because a lot of people just want to start with their flags straight away but you do need a way to attach it to something if it ends up being too long the piece that you have at the end then you can cut it down it's not a problem but if you're going to need to tie it or secure it in some way you are going to need a little bit extra without any flags there so i always give myself i mean depending on how long my bunting is about half a meter just so that i've got it and like i said if it does end up being too long i can just cut it off afterwards but if it's too short then I'm gonna struggle. So I'm just using a standard straight stitch. This one is a length three. It will be different on every machine. And then I am just going to sew all the way down, um, going backwards on myself when I first start and then keep going all the way down. So once I've left enough, I'm going to get my first flag. I'm going to insert it into my folded binding like that, making sure it's right up to the top here, and I'm gonna keep going. Now, a lot of people ask me how I get my flags the same length at the top, and basically, I make myself a marker. I either use a line that's already on my sewing machine as a guide, or I stick a piece of masking tape on my machine and then line my next flag up with that so that I can make sure they're all the same distance. That's a little pro tip for you. Okay, so I have stopped right on the edge of my red flag. So I'm going to use this line as my space up for each of my flags. So I'm now going to get my next color flag. I've lined up inside my binding to the edge of here and then I'm gonna keep sewing. And if I do that after every flag, it will give me the same distance between each one. So the bunting is all done, it is here, so I'm gonna pop that in the window in the window in a second. I've got hiccups, so um, I'll try and not hiccup in the middle of a sentence, but if there's a lot of editing in this next bit, it's because I'm editing them all out. <laughs> Good timing. Um, I also remembered at home, I had these reels. So they are actually used to have elastic on them from when everybody was buying <laughs> Everyone was buying elastic last year for face coverings, so I kept the empty spools and wrapped, wrapped ribbon around them so I could put them in the window last year. So I got my husband to dig them out of the loft and bring them here because I think they'll look, they'll look really great for the rainbow display. So I'm going to try and prop you somewhere so that you can see me putting these in the main window and then the bunting is going to go into our second window over there. And then that's the window's display is done and I'll show you what they look like from the outside.
Okay guys, so I'm back outside and the windows are done. So the bunting looks super duper cool in this window with all the different colors. And then in the main window, the light's a bit shiny, so I'm trying to sort of get a good view. Ta-da! So now the windows are finished, there's just a couple more things I wanted to highlight to show you if you wanted to get involved during Pride Month. So obviously rainbows can be made out of anything, so any scraps of fabric that you have at home, you can make things out of those, like you saw my bunting, that was all just little bits of each colour. I then also wanted to show you these fabrics. If you follow us on social media, you'll have seen these all before, but this one on our recent Pride post. And then there's a few kits as well. So we have some cross stitch kits, so this one is a little part one that says hope we have a rainbow and then there's a badge kit so these ones are really good these come in so many different dinosaurs and pandas and things and um, but they're no stitch kit you get a piece of wood in the back of it and then some felt and some glue and you stick them all together and uh, they're really really good for any age as long as obviously you're supervised um, and then this as well which is just so glittery these are all from the make arcade and everything I have shown these everything that's gone in the window everything else I will link in the description down below so if you want to get any of it then you are more than welcome that is it for now we hope you've enjoyed this video like I said before if you enjoy our content please like subscribe to our channel give us a thumbs up click the notification bell all of those things we post new content every Tuesday and we will see you then happy pride month and have a good day guys mm -hmm.